GPT-40 has been out for about a week now, so uh, I haven't done too much coding with it yet, so I thought I'd make a video where I do kind of three different challenges and kind of see what we can do with this new updated uh, model. Uh, it is definitely quicker, so that's a good sign. Okay, so the first challenge I wanted to do was take the Doom cover, kind of a JPG file or something, or PNG, and use Go, Golang, to convert it to ASCII, so we can kind of render it in the terminal, right? Uh, the second challenge I want us to do is to train a kind of simple neural network that we can take a data set of names, maybe like 20,000 names, and try to generate a new name based on that training set. And we can also put in some Harry Potter books and try to continue a sentence by training this neural network. So for that we will be using PyTorch with probably with CUDA to speed it up. And the final challenge was pretty cool, so this was to make a real-time voice changer uh, using CUDA and PyTorch, so this must be like in real time. Okay, so hopefully my voice is deeper now. Yeah, I can hear it. Wow, that's scary. And the latency is low. So like when I'm speaking into the mic, this should come out like we can change up the voice. So I think that's gonna be pretty cool. So I think we're just gonna dive into the first challenge and start with the Doom cover. Okay, so how I wanted to do this is just go to the chatgpt.com browser and select GPT-40 of course. Uh, you can see I've already done this, just, just to save a bit of a time. Uh, so we're just gonna go to my prompt, kind of have this responded and how uh, much effort we had to put in to get this working. So you can see here, I just started with, I wanna create a Go script that displays the Doom cover in colored characters in the terminal. Let's brainstorm how we can do this. Okay, so we kind of went through and we got some steps here, how we can do this. So load the image, convert to OSCE, add color, display in terminal. We need some tools and libraries packages in Go. And custom mapping logic, okay. And see escape codes. And here you can kind of see the detailed steps. So step one is gonna be to load the image, right? Okay. Step two, convert this to OSCE, yes. Step three is gonna be add color, because we need that, of course, to display the Doom uh, cover, and putting it all together. Here you can see we're loading doomcover.jpg, yeah. Okay, uh, okay, interesting. Can you write the full script? So that is kind of my prompt. Sure, here's the full uh, Go script that loads the image, and we get the full code, everything put together here. Right, explanation. And make sure you have uh, the Go package installed. So we're gonna grab some resize package here. And I just went ahead and did that. And then we can go run doomascii.go. I did that. I got a small error here. So I pasted that. And yeah, there was something wrong here. So I just we fixed that. We got a new code back. Uh, I got a second error. I just pasted in that. And hopefully this was the last iteration. Uh, okay, so the, the image was very big, I remember that, so I asked to make it two-thirds smaller. And yes, that was no problem. And again, I thought it was a bit big, I think, so make it 50% smaller on top of that, because it covered the whole screen. And yeah, here we kind of ended up with our final code. So you can see, kind of neat and tidy, and if you go to our Visual Code Studio, you can see it here. And yeah. Quite neat and tidy, we just uh, uploaded this Doom cover here. And let's try it out. Okay, so in our PowerShell terminal, let's just do go run doom.go. Okay, we got some characters here, so let's zoom out a bit here. And yeah, you can kind of see we got something here. Oh, there are some bugs in the rendering, so let's try that again. Yeah, that looks much better, right? Pretty cool. So yeah, we kind of went from um, the Doom cover in JPG, and if we zoom in here, you can kind of see all of this are just characters and ASCII. So yeah, I was pretty happy with this, I think it looks pretty cool. And I think this solved it, and it's pretty quick and go, so yeah, interesting, a language I don't know so much about. Okay, so I would say the first challenge was a pass. Now let's move on to the second one and actually training the neural network using PyTorch uh, with CUDA. So let me just show you kind of how I set this up in GPT-40. Okay, so as you can see here, here I spent a bit more time on actually the first prompt. 
So you can just say, I go, I have a prog programming project I want to do. I want to train a simple uh, machine learning neural network that can generate similar name based on the data set. Uh, so I found a data set with around 20,000 names. I'm going to show you that soon. I want to use PyTorch with CUDA in Windows. First, I wanna want the code to train the model to get the weights to generate names. I already have the data set with 20,000 names, one name on each line. Then I want the code to generate a new name, learn from data set and training. Can you help me? Okay, so this was kind of my initial thought. I had to change that up a bit, but let's see here now. So it kind of went straight ahead and gave me kind of an answer here. And define a model, I had to train the model. And this is in PyTorch, I think. Uh, okay, so write the full code and this was kind of our first set here uh, You can see we have the hyperparameters that we can adjust. We have the names.txt. That is our data set And we have a different thing here. So convert names to tensors get random training pairs Define the neural network model So we have the forward pass we have training the model. So that's the function for that uh, We have some loss setups and we have the training loop with the epochs we're gonna set and here we have kind of the generate name function inside of this, right? And it's going to spit out some names at the end here. So this looks good. So let's see what I did here. Yeah, we got a error when I tried to run it the first time. And that was fine. So we kind of fixed that. And yeah, we got a second error. So this was problem with the end of sentence token. So I just paid in that error. So we are on our third iteration here. And you can see here from the first run... Uh, yeah, this worked. So you can see we got the loss here uh, coming down and we got 10 different names. So let me just show you the data set we have. So yeah, this is kind of the simplest data set ever. There's just one line with a random name on it. So you can see if we scroll down here, I think it's about 20,000 lines here of just names, random names. And that's what we are trying to generate here. You can see on the first run we generated some names uh, and I just... Uh, pasted in the result from the first run and I said how can we optimize this for better results and we wanted to increase some more we wanted to add a new architecture LSTM I think that's a full code with LSTM and it brought a new uh, code with this new uh, model architecture to better uh, improve probably the loss changes made so model architecture hidden uh, layer in, uh, size was increased and we increased the number of epochs I think that was from if we go up here so we increased it from 20 to 50 and we increased the hidden layer size to 256 I think and yeah that was basically it so I think we are ready to run it now here you can kind of see the code in Python so we can set how many names we want to generate so let's just leave it at 10 now and yeah Pretty neat and tidy code here using Torch. And of course we are utilizing our CUDA course here to speed it up. So yeah, let's fire up the terminal here. And let's go Python. I think it's just, what did we call it? Was it genName.py? And let this run for 50 epochs. And come back and see what names we get and if they look similar. So you can see we have started here and the loss is going down. So that means that the training are working. So I'm just going to leave this running and yeah, let's check back when it's done. Okay, so this is almost complete. You can see we didn't get under uh, two in loss, but you can see here we generated those 10 names. So we have Marielle, Cariel, Jenna, Harlan, Vinna. So let me bring up the data set and see if any of these names are new. Okay, so let's search for Cariel. No, that was a new name we didn't have in our data set. Cariel, that's a weird name, right? But hey, we generated a new name. So yeah, I guess we are actually using this uh, simple neural network to generate some names kind of based on our data set. So yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, but now I wanted to kind of up the game a little bit and see if we can complete a sentence. So I just followed up it great if we upload a big text like a book as training data and we feed it a sentence like what did Harry do next can the model answer we only want to use PyTorch uh, so we get the yes it's possible to train a neural network on a large text data set such as a book and uh, it just gave me some uh, instructions here how we can do it we got some steps and model definition training right 
in friends and we kind of have the prompt here okay let's try it write the full code okay yeah good so we got the full code here uh, and I said great uh, let's take a look at the code here so I just call it potter.py I changed the prompt here to Harry ran to Hermione and said uh, we got some temperature here we can adjust so I put that to 0 3 we have a max length so that's 100 characters and yeah it's pretty much the same setup the only thing is we have the Harry Potter dot text data set so you can see this is just two Harry Potter books so the first two Harry Potter books that is kind of our data set I think it's about 25 30 thousand characters or something uh, but that's fine and yeah basically we run this to a bit of a different architecture this time uh, the hyperparameters are a bit different. We're gonna run 30 epochs and we have something here called sequence length. And yeah, let's just run it and see what happens. I have uh, no confidence that this is gonna work because it shouldn't, right? We probably need a we probably need a transformer architecture <laughs> to make this work right. But it's just for fun. And uh, let's test it out. So let me just run this. So let's just clear this and let's go python potter.py I think this is gonna take a bit more time But let's say if we can get this started here, didn't we say 50 epochs? Yeah, that's probably gonna take some time And uh, Let's see if we can get this started here uh, Okay, so we're only gonna do good 30 epochs. So we started at 2.9. Let's see where we end up at the end here okay so that was finished so let's see now uh, we dropped to about 1.5 let's hear the sentence Harry ran to Hermione and said the days of a low the stood he had been he couldn't he had and seemed and Hermione whispered the hoe <laughs> I think we got cut off here but yeah that was kind of a wild sentence right but we did produce some tokens or words I get or or characters but I wouldn't say this would uh, pass as a large language model. Uh, but we did, we did drop quite a low on the, the epoch, uh, on the loss. So I guess if we continued, maybe this could be better. I might give it a shot another time. But other than that, I'm pretty happy how this turned out. We did actually produce something behind our prompt here. So I thought that was pretty cool. And yeah, should I give it a pass? I don't know. But let's move on to the final challenge. And that was of course the real-time voice changer in CUDA PyTorch. So let me show you kind of how I set that up. So I just started with this pretty simple prompt. So I want to create a real-time voice alternation. It's kind of a bad word, but using CUDA Python for optimal low latency. Can you help me? I'm on Windows and I want to run this in the terminal. And yeah. Low latency, several steps, including capturing audio input, processing to alter the voice, and outputting modified audio in real time. Requirements, yeah, we have some CUDA, we have NumPy, install all these uh, dependencies, audio capture and playback, okay, so that was kind of the first we got. We need some, create a simple CUDA kernel for altering the voice, for example, applying a pitch shift, so that is kind of what we wanted. Integrate and run, here's the complete script, right, okay. Did I run that? Great, so when I speak, I want the output to be in a dark, low voice. And here it kind of gave me an alternative to set the pitch to 0.5. Uh, okay, we got an error here, so I pasted in that. Revise script, pretty much the same. We got a second error, so that we are on our third iteration. That is not too bad. Great, this is working. Okay. So let's try it out then. Okay, so here you can kind of see the code. Uh, we call it just voice.py. You can see we're using PyCuda, PyAudio, Compiler, NumPy. And we have, yeah, some CUDA thing here. We have the kernel. And to actually uh, define pitch shift for factor less than one raises the pitch. So we want to deepen our voice. So we're going to put it to 1.5. And hopefully this is going to work in real time now. So I'm just going to have to go to the OBS and switch up the audio so you can only hear my voice now. Let's say, yeah, you can hear my voice now. So let me switch that up and let's run the script. 
Okay, so hopefully my voice is deeper now. Yeah, I can hear it. Wow, that's scary. And the latency is low. It almost sounds like the anonymous voice, if you ask me. And um, yeah, that's pretty cool. Let's try to actually make it more of this robotic voice. Okay, so to follow that up, I said, what if we wanted a robot voice like Gladys or GLaDOS? I've, <laughs> I mispronounced that. Uh, if you want something similar to GLaDOS from Portal, uh, steps to create a robotic voice. So we got some suggestions here. We can try to add some distortion, format shifting. I don't know what it is, pitch modulation. So we got an uh, uh, altered script here, apply distortion. And let's see, uh, we need a small reverb effect because I tried it out and it added some kind of delay here 30 second delay for reverb And I think that is what we went for So yeah, uh, let me see, yeah, that was kind of our final robotic voice If we go to the code now you can see I call it a robot voice And I set the hyperparameters to 1.3 in shift and 1.8 in distortion so let's see if this is similar to kind of the voice from um, Portal. Hello? No, uh, I don't know. It's not exactly like GLaDOS, is it? But it's kind of a, a robot voice. Let's try to change the pitch a bit. What about now? It's definitely a bit darker, but I wouldn't say it's GLaDOS, is it? But it's more robotic, but uh, I think I kind of prefer the first voice, if you ask me. But pretty cool. Let's try to raise the pitch one last time. Hello? That was very high. So this will almost get drowned in the reverb and stuff. But it is worth it, so that's pretty cool, I think. And maybe you can see it on my mouth. The latency is low. Very low. It's almost... So yeah, I was very happy with that. I think that turned out pretty good if you ask me and the latency was almost nothing uh, Maybe you saw it on the webcam or the, my camera that uh, the mouth movement was pretty on level here So so far I've been impressed by ChatGB 404 coding. Is it gonna replace Opus? I don't know. Uh, let's take a look at the speed here. So let's just run this uh, prompt here so that is what it has kind of over GPT-4 Turbo, of course, and also over Opus, too. You can see the speed is much quicker. And, of course, this is going to save you time if you're going to do a lot of stuff in here. But if you have kind of infinite time, it doesn't really matter too much. But it's just more of a, what can I say, better user experience when you have the pace on your side, right? It's more much, much more efficient. So I like it a lot for that, man, and I'm going to keep testing if we are, if I'm going to switch mainly to this or if i'm gonna keep using opus but uh, i'm definitely gonna use this more for coding going forward as i as i already have been right i have been using gpt4 turbo but the pace sometimes annoys me but uh, with the gpt4 o model i think i'm gonna probably use it more so yeah basically i think we did a pretty good job on all of our challenges uh the second part is a bit meh but the first challenge and the second one was uh, flying cars so i was very happy with that so yeah, I think that was it for today, bit of interesting just to try it out, and uh, hopefully I will be back on Wednesday, it might be Thursday because my schedule is a bit off, but you will see that. Uh, other than that, have a great day, uh, have a great week, and uh, yeah, see you in a few days.